Before the video starts, I have a small request. I've launched a second channel called Tour Encyclopedia, where we explore the most fascinating and beautiful places around the world. If you're interested in travel, make sure to check it out and subscribe. The link is in the description below this video. And now, let's dive into the main episode. Top 5. Light Armored Vehicles. 11 to 14 tons. Number 5. Kavako KMPV. Meet the Kavako KMPV, South Korea's attempt to build a universal armored super jeep. It looks solid, carries people comfortably, and under the hood hides a turbo diesel engine that promises to take you anywhere. But let's see where the magic is, and where it's just metal on wheels. Powered by a 270 horsepower turbo diesel, it can hit 120 kilometers per hour on roads. Off-road, it can handle 60% gradients and 30% side slopes, cross ditches and rough terrain. In other words, it won't get stuck on most missions, unless you're intentionally trying to push its limits. Protection is serious, the KMPV is certified to withstand 7.62mm AP rounds and up to 6kg TNT blasts. Its V-shaped Monaco hull helps deflect explosions, and the modular armor allows mission-specific upgrades. Of course, add more armor, and you trade speed, fuel efficiency, and off-road agility for survivability, the classic armored vehicle compromise. Versatility is where the KMPV shines. It can be a troop carrier, command post, or medical evacuation vehicle. You can mount a machine gun, an anti-air module, or just stock it with stretchers. It's basically a Swiss army knife on wheels, just armored and way heavier. But nothing is perfect. At 12 tons, it's not the easiest to transport and guzzles fuel faster than a light truck. Its armor, while solid against small arms and light blasts, won't stop heavy caliber rounds or serious IEDs. Range is decent, but long missions might require frequent refueling. And yes, modularity is fantastic if you actually have the right kits and spare parts on hand. All in all, the Kavako KMPV is a modern, versatile, and practical platform. It's not a tank, and it's not a miracle worker, but it's a solid choice if you need a 4x4 armored vehicle that safely moves a squad, adapts to different missions, and still manages decent mobility. Know its limits, don't expect miracles, and you'll find it a reliable workhorse. Number 4. Inca Sentry APC Introducing the Inca Sentry APC, a vehicle that looks like it's ready to storm a fortress, yet might just be perfect for your next off-road adventure. With its imposing presence and rugged design, it's the armored vehicle equivalent of a bodybuilder in a tuxedo. Under the hood lies a 6.7L diesel V8 engine, delivering up to 362 horsepower. This beast is paired with a 6-speed automatic transmission and a 4WD drivetrain, ensuring it can tackle various terrains. Whether you're navigating urban jungles or off-road trails, the Sentry APC promises to get you there albeit with a fuel consumption that matches its size. Armor? Check! The Sentry APC boasts BR6 level protection, safeguarding against 762 by 51 mm armor-piercing rounds. Its multi-layer ballistic glass and overlap system prevent penetration between door seams. While it offers commendable defense, don't expect it to withstand a direct hit from a tank shell. Equipped with a roof-mounted turret, 18,000 pounds electric winch, and electronic night vision system, the Sentry APC is ready for various missions. Optional upgrades include 360 degrees cameras, crowd control systems, and emergency lighting, making it adaptable for different operational needs. At approximately 12 tons, the Sentry APC isn't exactly light on its feet. Its size and weight can limit maneuverability and increase fuel consumption. Additionally, while it offers impressive protection, its armor may not withstand more powerful threats. The Inca Sentry APC is a formidable armored vehicle, combining power, protection, and versatility. It's well-suited for missions requiring heavy-duty capabilities. 
However, potential buyers should consider its size, weight, and fuel efficiency when evaluating its suitability for specific operational needs. Number 3. Cobra 2. Meet the Cobra 2 Turkey's answer to let's build a 4x4 armored vehicle that's not quite a tank, but certainly more than a truck. It comes from Autocar, first introduced in 2013, designed to haul troops, keep them alive, and adapt to multiple missions. Under the hood, a 6.7-liter turbodiesel six-cylinder forced induction engine producing 360 HP and a torque figure around 1,100 newton meters, in certain versions, at 1,400 RPM. It can reach up to 110 km h on the road, with a range around 700 km depending on configuration. Dimensions, length up to 6.4 m, width 2.5 m, height 2.3 m, for many configs, with a gross vehicle weight up to 14.5 t in a typical configuration. Mobility claims are solid, gradients up to 60%, side slopes 30%, vertical obstacles 400-500 mm, trench crossing 1 m and certain spec versions. So it's built to get troops where things are rough, not nicely paved. The Cobra 2 is built with a monocoque hull and modular armor, emphasis on modular because one size doesn't always fit all. Many versions advertise protection against ballistic threats, 7.62mm, shell fragments, and a mine-slash-IED resistant floor plating option. Mission adaptability is a major selling point, APC-slash-troop carrier, reconnaissance, command and control, ambulance, even anti-air or anti-tank launcher platform. Need dual remote weapon stations? Sure. Want a floating amphibious variant? Possible. Standard goodies, CTIS, central tire inflation system, run-flat tires, ABS brakes, air conditioning slash heating, gun ports, roof hatches and modular mission kit. In short, it's as flexible as a modern armored platform should be. But, and yes, we always have a but, Cobra 2 is not a miracle. Want to treat it like a light tank strolling through minefields? You'll quickly find limits. The modular armor is good, but heavier protection equals heavier weight equals increased fatigue on components plus less off-road agility, plus bigger logistic footprint. Also, while the mobility numbers are respectable, the heavier configurations, especially MRAP variant or max armor builds, push the envelope, transport, airlift, deployment times and fuel consumption become real concerns. Another point, modular can mean your mission kit is only as good as your supply chain. If you slide into the field with the base armor and no add-on mine kit, your MRAP becomes medium armored truck. And yes, maintenance and spare part commonality in some export markets may lag behind the major western producers, when things break, the real test is how fast you fix, not how shiny the brochure looks. In its sweet spot, Cobra 2 is excellent for modern mechanized infantry needing a 4x4 that can carry 10 troops, patrol contested terrain, operate in peacekeeping or asymmetric warfare, swap between roles, and still survive blasts and small arms fire better than older platforms. If you're in a situation where flexibility, modularity, decent protection and mobility matter more than ultra-heavy armor, the Cobra 2 gives value. However, if you expect tank-level survivability against large IEDs, heavy mines or full-scale mechanized assaults, you'll want something heavier. Cobra 2 will do the job, but it won't dominate the battlefield in that scenario. The Autocar Cobra 2 is a well-rounded, modern tactical armored vehicle that delivers on many fronts, mobility, modularity, protection, mission flexibility. It does so with fewer pretensions than super-heavy tank disguised as a truck. If your mission is to move troops safely, switch between roles quickly, and keep logistic tails manageable, this vehicle hits that mark. Just keep realistic expectations, protection is good, not infinite, agility is strong, but heavier configs bring trade-offs, and modular gear means you'll want a solid supply chain behind you. In the world of 4x4 tactical armored vehicles, Cobra 2 is one of the smart picks, as long as you drive it knowing where its limits lie, and maybe with a smile that says, no, I'm not invincible, but yes, we're still getting there.
Number 2. Bushmaster Protected Mobility Vehicle Meet the Bushmaster Protected Mobility Vehicle, Australia's battle-proven, slightly smug-looking answer to the question, how do we move a squad safely without turning them into confetti? It's a purpose-built infantry mobility vehicle that prioritizes crew survivability above all else, and, spoiler, it mostly succeeds. Under the skin the Bushmaster is straightforward and sensible, a V-Hull monocoque design, purpose-shaped to deflect blast energy away from the occupants. It carries a crew plus up to 9 passengers, 10 people total in many configs, with decent internal space, air conditioning and provisions for long patrols, the kind of practical design choices that tell you the engineers actually rode in one before the bosses signed off. Range tops out around 800 kilometers, and the driveline, sturdy diesel, automatic gearbox, independent suspension, is tuned for long missions rather than drag strip antics. Protection is the Bushmaster's headline feature. The standard hull offers significant mine and IED protection thanks to the V-shape and strong floor structure, armor is modular and can be fitted up toward higher standing levels depending on the mission fit, in short, it's designed to keep soldiers alive when the world gets loud and metallic. Operational history backs that up, reports note dozens of IED and blast incidents where Bushmasters protected their crews, a serious credibility boost in a business where survived is the ultimate KPI. But let's be honest, no vehicle is a miracle. The Bushmaster is large and relatively heavy compared with light patrol trucks, so it isn't the nimblest thing on technical terrain, it's turning and transport footprint matter for planners. It's also optimized for troop protection and endurance, meaning you trade some speed and stealth for survivability and payload. And yes, increasing armor or adding heavier weapons and sensors raises weight and complexity, so every upgrade needs a logistics plan and a patient mechanic. Operationally the Bushmaster scores very well, used across multiple theaters, East Timor, Iraq, Afghanistan, Mali and UN missions, it's a known quantity with a lengthy service record and a good safety record where lives mattered. That track record is worth more than the shiniest brochure line when commanders have to choose what to send down a suspect road. Bottom line, if your priority is to move soldiers safely through environments where mines, IEDs and small arms threats are real, the Bushmaster is a mature, well-engineered and proven choice. It's not fun to drive like a sports car, and it won't win beauty contests, but it will keep people alive. In the world of protected mobility, that's not just good enough, it's the point. Number 1. FNSS PARS 4x4 Meet the FNSS PARS 4x4 Turkey's armored answer to the age-old question, can a 4x4 really do everything? Apparently, the answer is yes, if by everything you mean climb hills, cross rivers, carry troops, and make your logistics officer weep with joy over fuel consumption. Under the hood, there's a diesel engine married to an automatic transmission, pushing the vehicle to 110 km per hour on roads. Off-road? It laughs at 70% gradients and 40% side slopes like it's walking up a gentle hill. And yes, it even swims at about 6.5 km per hour. So if you've ever dreamed of a vehicle that's part SUV, part amphibian, and part overachiever, here it is. Armor is decent. The PARS 4x4 can stop 7.62x51mm rounds and has basic mine protection. The hull is designed to absorb some IED energy which is great, just don't start imagining it shrugging off tank shells or magically turning into an invincible fortress. Protection is solid, but it's still a 4x4, not a superhero. It comes packed with tech that makes any vehicle enthusiast drool, remote weapon stations, anti-tank missile capability, night vision, thermal cameras, laser rangefinders, basically a mobile Swiss army knife that can shoot back. You could send this on a recon mission, a patrol, or even a small-scale let's annoy the enemy operation, and it would probably handle it. Now for the fun part, the reality check. Despite all its capabilities, this isn't some magical transformer. The amphibious function is best for shallow streams, not the Amazon River. Maneuvering tight urban streets? It's big, it's heavy, and you will curse every corner. And yes, all that armor and tech makes it thirsty, fuel stops are inevitable, so better pack snacks. In short, the FNSS PARS 4x4 is versatile, tough, and surprisingly agile for a vehicle that tries to do everything. But like any overachiever, it comes with quirks, it's not invisible, it's not invincible, 
and it's not exactly a city-friendly commuter. If you want a 4x4 that can handle bad terrain, take a few hits, and maybe make your enemy slightly uncomfortable, Pars has your back. Just don't ask it to brew coffee on the way. Thank you for watching.